Welcome to Creative Biolabs. After decades of development and innovation, Creative Biolabs has gained rich experience in ribosome research. Extensive market experience and diverse analytical methods ensure the highest quality for customers in ribosome research. Creative Biolabs is committed to demonstrating our strong expertise and capabilities in the field of ribosome research, as well as expanding our research and service capabilities to multiple fields. Today, this five-part video we will briefly introduce ribosome analysis technology, polysome profiling, ribosome profiling, ribosome affinity purification, and highlight the ribosome analysis solutions provided by Creative Biolabs. Part 1. Ribosome Analysis Technology As an important macromolecular translation machinery in organisms, ribosomes are closely associated with protein synthesis, cell proliferation, and other life activities. In recent years, scientists have become increasingly interested in studying ribosome-related factors. Ribosomes are complexes of RNA and proteins that translate mRNA sequences into proteins in all living cells. In addition, there is a strong correlation between ribosome biogenesis and cell proliferation. Increasing evidence suggests that ribosomal biogenesis imbalance is closely associated with an increased risk of cancer and metabolic disorders. Ribosome analysis has identified some factors involved in these complex processes, providing a new perspective for further investigation into the nature and function of ribosomes. The reason for the poor correlation between the transcriptome and proteome is that the translation of mRNA into proteins involves complex and precise translation regulation that accounts for more than 50% of all regulations and represents the most important regulatory mechanism within cells. Research on translation regulation is known as translational genomics. When discussing translational genomics, the focus is on the mRNA being translated, as it serves as the blueprint for protein synthesis. The detection techniques for the translationome can be traced back to the 1960s with the development of polysome profiling, and since then, various detection techniques have emerged. Here, we will introduce three of these techniques which are polysome profiling, ribosome profiling, and ribosome affinity purification. Polysome profiling utilizes the characteristic of polysomes having a greater sedimentation coefficient to separate polysomes using sucrose density gradient centrifugation. The greater the number of ribosomes bound to an mRNA, the faster its sedimentation rate during centrifugation, allowing mRNAs with different numbers of ribosomes to be separated. The isolated components can then be analyzed for their respective mRNAs. Ribosome profiling is a typical method for detecting actively translated mRNA. It first uses low concentrations of RNAs to degrade mRNA fragments that are not covered by ribosomes in the ribosome peptide complex. Finally, the resulting ribosome-protected RNA fragments are subjected to sequencing analysis. This method provides information on the distribution of ribosomes on each translated transcript, allowing for the inference of translation initiation codon positions and URFs, among other things. Ribosome affinity purification uses indirect labeling of mRNA and genetic targeting of cell type specificity. This is achieved by expressing the L10A protein that binds to the ribosome large subunit using tissue-specific promoters and attaching an affinity tag at the C-terminus. Transformed cells are then used to capture the labeled ribosomes using antibodies, allowing for the analysis of the mRNA being translated by these ribosomes. Part 2 Polysome Profiling Polysome profiling can study the overall translation level in cells and is mainly used to investigate individual proteins and their mRNA. In the past few decades, researchers employed quantification of mRNA abundance in polysome fractions through sucrose density gradient centrifugation to study the translation activity of individual genes. Essentially, the analysis of mRNA in each fraction of the polysome gradient can estimate the ribosome occupancy of all expressed mRNAs in the cell. Based on the assumption that ribosome density is highly correlated with protein production, the translation efficiency of individual genes can be calculated based on these results. 
The technique mainly involves sample preparation, preparation and ultracentrifugation of sucrose gradients, polysome fractionation and sample collection, followed by fraction analysis. This process initially prepares the cell lysates of the interested cells. The lysates contain polysomes, monomers, small ribosomal subunits, large ribosomal subunits, free mRNA, and a variety of other soluble cellular components. The process continues by preparing a continuous sucrose gradient with continuously variable density in a centrifuge tube. At the concentration used, sucrose does not interfere with the binding of ribosomes and mRNA. Due to density difference, the lower concentration gradient portion is located at the top of the tube, while the higher concentration gradient portion at the bottom. Then, a specific amount of lysate is gently layered at the top of the gradient in the tube. Despite containing a large amount of soluble substances, its density is much lower than that of the low-concentration sucrose, so it can be preserved as a separate layer at the top of the test tube if handled gently. To separate the components of the lysate, the formulation is centrifuged. This accelerates the components of the lysate several times with the force of gravity, pushing them through the gradient based on their size. The small subunits travel a shorter distance than the large subunits. The ADS ribosomes on the mRNA travel further. Polysomes composed of two ribosomes can move a greater distance, polysomes composed of three ribosomes can move an even greater distance, and so on. After centrifugation, the contents in the tube are collected as fractions from the top, smaller, slower moving, to the bottom, larger, faster moving, and the optical density of the fractions is measured. However, Due to the sucrose density centrifugation method used, less translating mRNA is recovered, making it difficult to obtain the sample volume required for a comprehensive analysis. Part 3 Ribosome Profiling Ribosome profiling, also known as RiboSeq, is a technique used for identifying translated mRNA regions, observing how nascent peptides fold, and measuring the quantity of specific synthesized proteins. The experiment starts with cell lysis, followed by the isolation and fixation of mRNA ribosome complexes. Next, non-protected mRNA sequences are digested using nucleases. The ribosome-protected mRNA fragments are then purified and subjected to standard deep sequencing protocols, such as library preparation. However, this method can only analyze protein coding regions that are bound by ribosomes and cannot provide information on untranslated regions. Key Steps of Ribosome Profiling 1. Freezing ribosomes on mRNA to prevent ribosome loss. After culturing cells, a translation inhibitor is used to treat the cells. The most commonly used ribosome footprinting inhibitors include cyclohexamide, anisomycin, and emetine. These inhibitors must be used with caution due to their potential artifacts in ribosome distribution, which are specific to cell or organism type, cell growth conditions, and the content of lysis buffer. 2. Digestion of unprotected regions of mRNA by ribonucleases. Ribonucleases are what degrade and break down exposed mRNA, except for ribosome-protected fragments, RPFs. The accuracy of this step depends on the buffer conditions with lower concentrations of sodium and magnesium being the preferred choice for uniform digestion by ribonucleases. 3. Recovery of mRNA ribosome complexes and RNA purification. After ribonuclease digestion, the mRNA ribosome footprint complexes are recovered using sucrose density gradient or by precipitation using sucrose cushions. Alternatively, mRNA ribosome complexes can be recovered through gel filtration or affinity purification using epitope tags added to the ribosomes, which is crucial for analyzing specific cell types. The obtained ribosome pellet is resuspended in triazole-slash-chiazole reagent, and then the protected RNA fragments are purified using spin columns. Subsequently, the separated RNA is separated by polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis to isolate the RNA fragments corresponding to 26 to 34 nt lengths that correspond to RPFs. 4. Library preparation and deep sequencing. After RPF purification, it is necessary to remove rRNA from the sample, 
as the abundance of rRNA can result in fewer RPFs being sequenced and decreased mapping reads. A reagent kit can be used to remove rRNA. Once RPFs are depleted of rRNA, polyadenylate polymerase can be used to add tails, or single-stranded RNA adapters with known sequences can be ligated to the three-foot end of RPFs. Then, RNA fragments are converted into complementary DNA by reverse transcriptase, which serves as the template for PCR amplification. The resulting library can be sequenced to generate a bioinformatics library containing RPF sequencing reads. Mapping these sequenced RPFs to the transcriptome provides a snapshot of translation, revealing the position and density of ribosomes on individual mRNAs within the transcriptome. 5. Data analysis The upstream steps of RiboSeq analysis are similar to the standard RNA-seq data analysis workflow, including red mapping to transcripts. Downstream RiboSeq data analysis involves calculating translation efficiency when paired with RNA-seq data, identifying differentially translated transcripts, de novo identification of transcript open reading frames, ORFs, and detecting potential translation pausing events. Part 4, Ribosome Affinity Purification Translation analysis is conducted using the Translating Ribosome Affinity Purification TRAP, strategy to target specific cell types of interest by expressing EGFPL10A transgenes into appropriate genetic components. Translating ribosomes, polysomes, from non-target cells, gray cells, B, lacks EGFP labeling on their ribosomes, whereas translating polysomes from target cells, green cells, C, has EGFP labeling on their ribosomes. Lysis of all cells releases labeled and unlabeled polysomes. Only the labeled polysomes are captured on an anti-GFP affinity matrix, which can be used to purify cell type-specific mRNA associated with the labeled polysomes. This method requires stable transfection of cell lines to express tagged ribosomal proteins and is more complex and time-consuming when applied to transgenic animals and plants. Moreover, the overexpression of ribosomal proteins can interfere with normal physiological conditions, leading to translation distortion. Therefore, the application of this technique is subject to certain limitations. The three methods mentioned above have their own advantages and disadvantages, as shown in the table. Polysome profiling can measure the ribosome density of each mRNA, allowing the direct capture of translation activity through a single measurement. The power of ribosome profiling in conveying positional information not only reveals the dynamic changes of translation complexes under different conditions, but also uncovers the cis and trans acting control mechanisms that these changes can confer. Additionally, the parallel development of affinity tagging methods allows for cell and tissue specific analysis of ribosomes in complex heterogeneous samples. These types of translation analysis methods are often reliable fast, and efficient, as they rely on strong immunoprecipitation targeting specific labels. However, the current translation analysis methods still need improvement and further development as all three methods have limitations. Both polysome and ribosome profiling require relatively large sample volumes and laborious biochemical purification using sucrose density gradients, which can lead to contamination. Affinity purification techniques typically require the expression of exogenous tagged ribosomes, capturing only a fraction of ribosomes in the cell. The combination and further iteration of these three major methods may potentially address the respective issues of each method. Part 5 – Ribosome Analysis at Creative Biolabs Creative Biolabs is a world-leading CRO and recognized expert dedicated to providing high-quality services to global customers. Benefiting from the development and accumulation, Creative Biolabs is equipped with cutting-edge instruments, advanced technology platforms, as well as a professional technical team. Creative Biolabs is committed to demonstrating our strong expertise and capabilities in the field of ribosome research and expanding our research and service capabilities to their areas. After years of practice and accumulation, Creative Biolabs has successfully completed many ribosome-related projects. With advanced technology, 
we provide diverse ribosome-related services. Our services include but are not limited to ribosome separation and extraction services, ribosome analysis services, and ribosomal marker antibody development services. Ribosome Separation and Extraction Services The separation of ribosomal particles is essential for studying ribosomal composition and analyzing factors that interact with ribosomes. Creative Biolabs has extensive experience in ribosome extraction and separation experiments. We provide cost-effective services tailored to our customer-specific needs. The strategies for isolating ribosomes vary depending on the organism and experimental objectives. Generally, ribosome separation mainly involves centrifugation and immunoprecipitation, IP, both of which have distinctive advantages and disadvantages. Centrifugation techniques require long periods of rotation, exposing ribosomes to ribonucleases and proteases for an extended period of time. Another limitation is the poor solubility of the resulting ribosomal particles. In contrast, IP methods are faster and can generate soluble ribosomes. However, it requires the addition of a tag to the surface-exposed proteins, which may interfere with the study of the target. Moreover, IP methods may lead to improper dissociation of ribosome-assisting factors, affecting research outcomes. To obtain high-yield and high-purity ribosome products to ensure subsequent experimental results, Creative Biolabs has established ribosome preparation protocols for animal tissues, cultured cells, bacteria, plant samples, and chloroplasts to meet your research goals in ribosomal composition and omics analysis. Ribosome Analysis Services more and more evidence suggests that ribosomal biosynthesis dysregulation is closely related to increased risks of cancer and metabolic disorders. Analysis of the ribosome has identified some factors involved in these complex processes, providing new perspectives for further research on the nature and function of the ribosome. Creative Biolabs is pleased to offer ribosomal analysis services to global customers. Both biological science and medicine rely on fast genomic and transcriptomic analysis techniques to probe cell states, physiology, and activities. The development of ribosomal transcriptomics lays the foundation for further understanding of protein synthesis processes. Among them, microarray and next-generation transcript sequencing, RNA-seq, are the most advanced and RNA-seq has provided immense possibilities for modern biological analysis. For ribosomal transcriptomes, the analysis mainly involves cDNA libraries of short mRNA fragments covered by the ribosome. The conventional belief that a ribosome is merely a translation machine has significantly impeded advances in ribosomal proteomics. With the proposal of the ribosome filtering hypothesis and the study of ribosome-specific regulatory ability, Ribosomal proteomics has become a powerful tool for ribosome research. In order to better separate and identify proteins used in ribosomal proteomics research, a series of advanced mass spectrometry techniques have been developed. Creative Biolabs provides both label-dependent strategies and label-independent strategies. Among them, stable isotope labeling of amino acids in cell culture, silic, isobaric tags for relative and absolute quantitation, ITRAQ, and isotope-coded affinity tag, ICAT, are the most commonly used. The combination of RFHR2DE with MALDI-TOF MS and multiple reaction monitoring, MRM, is a classic label-independent strategy. Ribosomal Marker Antibody Development Services Ribosomal proteins were initially seen as supplements to the rRNA in ribosomes, but are now becoming mediators in various checkpoint pathways that link ribosome biogenesis to cell cycle and other cellular functions. While there is a clear connection between ribosome production and cancer, some ribosomal proteins can trigger anti-cancer responses. Characterizing the structural motifs that mediate all non-ribosomal functions of ribosomal proteins will provide insights into the evolution of anti-cancer responses and the development of new targets for anti-cancer drugs. In this context, the development of ribosome labeling antibodies has become an attractive and meaningful project. 
Creative Biolabs has been focusing on ribosomes for many years. Through years of accumulated practice, our platform has been gradually optimized with the latest technologies, advanced equipment, and experienced scientists. With all these foundations, we have the confidence to provide our global customers with satisfactory services. Why choose us? Perfect experimental platform, we have established a complete experimental platform for ribosome purification and analysis. Professional research team, our excellent research team specializes in theoretical knowledge and practical skills in ribosome isolation and analysis. Abundant experience, we have extensive experience from numerous successful ribosome projects. We can tailor a professional process to your project requirements. One-stop service of high quality, our team can provide diverse and low-cost, high-efficiency one-stop ribosome analysis services. For more about Creative Biolabs, please visit our website. Thanks for watching.